It's been a little while since we've talked about Tesla's full self-driving and autonomy division, but we've had a few interesting developments that have come up recently, and I think it's worthwhile coming back to this topic and seeing how both Tesla and the autonomous driving industry as a whole have progressed since AI Day back in August. There has been the usual stream of negativity, of course. CNN felt like it was necessary to drop a hit piece on Tesla for the clicks. We had the first reported crash involving FSD beta, and NVIDIA is now hyping up their own full stack autonomous vehicle solution. But through all of that, Tesla is continuing to improve and make cool stuff. So let's talk about it. As of right now, Tesla have just rolled out version 10.5 of the full self-driving beta. And by all accounts, this is one of the better updates that we've seen so far. Version 10 has been a bit hit and miss over the past couple of months, with some updates actually appearing to step backwards in progress and some glitches and phantom braking issues popping up for a bunch of users. But if you wanna keep things in perspective, Whole Mars Catalog posted a tweet the other day that shows side by side the FSD visualization from one year ago versus what it looks like today, and the difference is just stunning. It can actually be easy to lose sight of just how far we've come in one year, and remembering the days of jittery dotted lines and cuboids really puts things back in perspective. What we're really getting excited for now is version 11 of the FSD beta software. According to Elon Musk, this is when the system will go to what they call single stack. So right now there is one AI system that is in charge of the auto steer on city streets function. That's the beta stack. And then there is the AI system for highway driving, which is the same old FSD stack from the pre-beta days. With version 11, the new AI stack will take over everything, including highway driving. And we've got some indications from the most recent 10.5 release notes that more highway-based features are making their way into the beta stack. There are a bunch of new functions added that center around how the car will handle merges and lane changes. The network is getting smarter about predicting how other vehicles will merge into the lane, and the system is starting to make advanced decisions like moving over a lane to make room for other cars to merge. The kind of thing that a human driver would think to do, but we haven't really seen yet from a machine driver. They are also ramping up the car's tolerance for making aggressive lane changes, like what it might have to do on a packed freeway. And that's a scenario where we've seen the software have issues before. In some cases, the cars will be too hesitant to merge into a busy freeway and will just abort that route plan entirely. Of course, it's not all good news. The more the software gets used and the bigger the testing pool grows, the more opportunity there is going to be for something to go badly wrong. And according to an NHTSA report, we've now seen our first collision with the FSD beta engaged. The incident happened on November 3rd, was reported to the NHTSA on November 8th, and is still visible on their website today. The claim is that halfway through a left-hand turn, the Tesla under FSD beta control went out of its lane and was hit on the driver's side by another vehicle. The fact that auto steer lost its lane mid-turn isn't all that surprising. We know that does happen from time to time when the road markings aren't clear. What is surprising is the part where the driver writes, I tried to turn the wheel to avoid it from going into the wrong lane, but the car by itself took control and forced itself into the incorrect lane. That's the first we've ever heard of anyone trying to claim that autopilot failed to disengage when it was supposed to, or anyone having to actively fight with their Tesla for control. That's a new one. And I'm not saying that's what actually happened, it probably isn't, but that's what's out there until proven false. The NHTSA provided a statement to Teslarati on November 16th that said, quote, NHTSA is aware of the consumer complaint in question and is in communication with the manufacturer to gather additional information, end quote. And just for the record, according to NHTSA clarifications, gathering information is not the same thing as investigating. 
We've been keeping an eye out for Elon Musk to say something about the incident, but so far he's been strangely quiet on this one. The most we've gotten from Tesla is on November 22nd, when they released an amendment to the FSD beta terms that compels users to agree to Tesla's collection of external and internal camera recordings in the occurrence of a serious safety risk of collision. When Whole Mars Catalog posted about this change on Twitter, saying, no doing something stupid and then trying to blame Tesla, Elon Musk replied simply with, exactly, and the word sigh in brackets. So at least we know that the next time this happens, and there will be a next time, unfortunately, at least we won't be left guessing on the details. Before we continue, I want to thank Extra for sponsoring today's video. Extra is the first debit card that lets you build your credit and earn reward points just like a credit card without the risk. With Extra, you can connect your existing bank account and then when you swipe your Extra card, they will spot you for that purchase and automatically pay themselves back the next business day. At the end of the month, they add up all the transactions and report them to the credit bureau as credit payments. This allows extra users to build credit without any interest. A good credit score can save you a bunch of money when it comes to buying a new car or house. And that's because people with good credit get better interest rates, which has a big effect on your costs. Nobody likes paying more than they have to, so it's always a good idea to build good credit. You never know when you're gonna need it. So sign up for extra with the link in my bio and start building your credit with a debit card. Yes, a debit card today. And now let's get back to the video. At the same time all of that was unfolding, the mainstream media at CNN decided to take their own crack at reporting on Tesla's full self-driving beta. And things got really weird. The four minute video from CNN is peppered with disengagements and close calls with the reporter behind the wheel looking very frightened by what's happening to him. Of course, they chose Brooklyn, New York as the testing ground to show the world what Tesla's FSD beta can do. A jam-packed, chaotic urban environment built on top of a 300-year-old city. So obviously FSD had some problems, and there were a few near misses, which is pretty much the case for anyone driving in New York City, whether they're a person or a robot. Right now, the video has around 270,000 views. I think CNN expected to get a viral video poking fun at Tesla, and it didn't quite happen for them. But what's really comical about the whole situation is that we now have a second video from the owner of the car used in the CNN report. He was in the backseat the whole time and filming with his cell phone just in case there was a crash or something like that. From the backseat video, we can see a lot more of what actually happened inside the car during the report. And from the second video, we can still see FSD making a bunch of mistakes, but we also see just as many situations where it performs really well, and the reporter seems genuinely impressed by what the Tesla is able to do. It's pretty fascinating to be able to watch both videos and see what CNN chose to include and what they left out. There was more than enough opportunity to make a balanced report that showed the pros and cons of the new software, and the reporter was actually pretty fair and unbiased throughout the whole drive. But CNN editors obviously thought focusing on the negatives alone would gain them more views. Something else that's come up recently is this push from NVIDIA to enter the autonomous vehicle game. At their November GTC conference, the company laid out their own full stack system for autonomous vehicles with NVIDIA drive hardware and software. The company is selling this as an open autonomy platform for automakers. So if a company like Mercedes doesn't want to develop their own autonomy system in house, they can just buy what they need from NVIDIA. They can choose just parts of the system or integrate the whole thing as well. We know that the other automakers can't compete with Tesla's internal self-driving development of their own, but maybe NVIDIA can help them get a leg up. NVIDIA also released a bunch of weird metaverse stuff and some kind of driving concierge program that centers around a dead-eyed alien baby thing that lives in an egg. I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be, and to be honest, it kind of freaks me out. Anyways, the NVIDIA drive system looks like it works fairly similar to Tesla FSD, 
it transforms surround video feeds into a 4D digital world model, and they're also using simulations and auto labeling to train their AI network, the same as Tesla is doing. NVIDIA is planning to roll out their Hyperion 8 system in 2024 as a production-ready autonomous vehicle platform. The system uses 12 cameras, 9 radars, 12 ultrasonics, and 1 front LiDAR, which is a ton of sensors. Tesla Vision uses 8 cameras, period. The Tesla AI team actually found that having too much input is a problem. It just ends up creating a bunch of noise in the system and you get too many conflicts between what the cameras are seeing versus what the radar is detecting. NVIDIA seems to be going hard in the opposite direction. They're just throwing as many sensors in there as they can fit. Again, we'll just have to wait and see how they do. Obviously not every car in the world can be a Tesla, so somebody else has to figure out autonomous vehicles eventually. NVIDIA also provided us with a demonstration video of their Hyperion 8 platform running on a Mercedes sedan, and it's honestly a bit comical to watch. I don't know if they shot this video on a holiday or if they actually closed the roads for filming, but it's super obvious just how little traffic there is around the test car. The shots with pedestrians crossing in front of the car are clearly staged, the camera angles and the blocking are too perfect to be real. Then we get these drone shots of the test car driving on a road that's wide enough to land a 747 jet or fit a gigantic roundabout, but with zero traffic anywhere close. When you compare that against Tesla's promotional video from AI Day, where the car is driving through a tight suburban neighborhood, or especially compared to one of the hundreds of user uploaded raw videos of FSD beta working in city streets, it's just still nowhere even close. It's obviously still going to take most people a while before they can get over the inherent fear and uncertainty around what Tesla is doing right now, and it makes sense. There definitely is something uncomfortable about all of this new artificial intelligence based tech popping up all around us. It can feel like people are starting to lose control, and that can be scary. It's going to take some time before we collectively start to figure out which AI is good and which is bad. Tesla's autonomous vehicle program is definitely a front runner to be one of the good ones. At some point, it's going to start making cars a lot safer and more enjoyable to drive for everyone, and most people are going to appreciate that. I think we'll start to see the change come with version 11 of the FSD beta. That really feels like the time when everything is going to start coming together. Version 10 has felt like a lot of trial and error and just working things out until they get it right. It's like we're so close to being amazing most of the time, but just not quite there yet, and that still leaves a lot of room open for folks like CNN to come in and bend the narrative any way that they choose. There's not a whole lot we're going to be able to do about that until Tesla can come out and definitively prove them wrong. How long do you think that's going to be though? I'd give it about a year before the narrative really starts to turn towards a more positive view, but leave your ideas in the comments section below. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.